Hi, welcome to another video. I finally got my 5 inch screen back from Microchip. Now it's finally balanced because the plastic supports held on with glue broke in shipping. So this is finally balanced on a plastic bag and the display board. But to give you an idea, it's on a board similar to this with a PIC 32 microcontroller. It's actually the EFH144 running at 252 megs. And it's got some onboard RAM. This, this board hasn't, but the one running this has. So when I got the board back and I had this bigger display, I thought, right, I'm finally going to debug this glitch in the IDE causing my right number function not to work or not to work correctly. It wasn't blanking positions where numbers had been. So I've changed the background colour so you can see what's happening. And as I've discussed over the past few weeks, the sensible way to write a number is to have a footprint for each character. And when a new character comes along, it draws the whole footprint. And up here, out of the wild one, it's drawing all the characters. And this is a space. The glitch was, when this got to over 100, the numbers would increment. So the function was working, but when it dropped below 100, it would not clear that position. I eventually established the optimizer must have been deleting, removing my flags, which caused the whole system not to function correctly. And when I got the screen back, I'm more familiar with this screen than others. I prefer right, big numbers. Let's start from scratch. I put my counter here copied my right number function, cut it down so it just gives me a bit, a one or a naught, I'll show you on the screen, and watched my flags here. Let me start this counter, I'll let it run through some numbers, and you can watch these flags. So when it gets over 10, this flag will be cleared to zero. When it gets over 100, this one goes to zero. Over 1000, this one goes to zero. And 10,000, this one goes to zero. But what's important is when the numbers drop below like 10,000, 1,000, 100, you don't want to keep on clearing that position. You want to clear that position once and be done with it. So I've just turned this on and you can see there's no blanks. So when you first turn it on, all the bits are set. And because the number hasn't incremented over 10 or over 100, there's nothing to clear, so that's exactly what you or I would expect. I've also cut this right number function down, so today it can only count to 99,999. So I've simply commented out everything 100,000 and above, and that's cut 2,000 bytes from that right number function. So we're down to about 4,000 bytes. Bearing in mind, if you saw my video the other day, you need at least one and a half, two thousand bytes to write a character using Microelectronics' TFT library. This I'll show you on the screen. Cutting my number function down, just to show you a bit, brings the function down to about 600 bytes. I'll show you how to modify it. So this is my write number function for an SSD 1963. This particular one is a 5 inch 800 by 480 and you can take and copy this function, drop it into your own code and you'll have a sensible method of writing numbers and a fast method. Let me start this counter. So it starts off slowly so you can see it. Watch when it goes over 10 this flag gets set, when it goes over 100 this flag gets set and then it speeds up. Well, it's just gone over 10, flag is cleared. And notice these numbers aren't flashing on and off, so it's not clearing, resetting, clearing, resetting, because we don't want that. It's gone over 10, but I don't want it cleared until it drops below 10. That's the 100 cleared. Thousands cleared. And these obviously quick enough to show us if that flag is being set and reset and it's not they're not being reset 
wait for the 10,000 there we go 10,000 well so now you can see they've all been cleared and they cleared once and all of those got set to 1 so if this position here was being constantly cleared this would be flashing 1 and 0, 1 and 0 and it's quick enough to show you that that was my ultimate goal developing this number system There we go. This is over 10. Over 10 and not being cleared until it drops below 10. That's over 100. Over 1000. So although this, these are flags, these are just bits that I put in position to give me a specific function. And you can see it's quite clear what each bit is doing in any point in time. So if you're having trouble debugging your system put some additional bits down here and look at what bit is giving you trouble and I put my bits here and when it went to over 100 this wasn't going to zero it was staying at one and unfortunately the, the, the glitch the problem has gone away now instead of done and the number one and done and the number two done and the number three I spelt it out so there was definitely going to be no optimization so done one became done o n e done two became done t w o and from that everything worked and i've not looked back and then quickly revised the ili9341 code i did the other week and some other color tfts and even the organic LED which are only one color you still have to blank where the number has been but only if it's been there hopefully that makes sense so when I say debugging your code I don't mean get the debugger and see what's happening and look at the values or look at timing when I say debugging I mean put some additional bits on the screen and see what the bits are doing that's what I've done for years it's helped me immensely maybe it will help you so you can see the numbers have been there so they've been cleared but if I turn the system off and back on you won't be able to see where they've been because they won't have been used but now let me change this background color to the proper color right this is programming now there we go so nothing's been cleared as you saw before Only when the numbers drop various decimal places do the previous places need clearing and you can still see the flags it's a bigger screen with a faster microcontroller so I can afford to go bigger with a font I like big fonts now you've seen if a character has not been in a certain position it will not clear it See now, when this drops below 100, it's going to clear this position. When it drops below 1000, it will clear this position. The right numbers are very similar to what you saw the other day. So, right zero. Each number function is very similar to what you've seen before. We step through the font with this J. And then for eight times, we look at each bit within the byte 
which is this JJ and I and date it out if it's a pixel it writes a pixel otherwise it writes the background color which is still a pixel but it's in the background color and then we simply I equals I shifted left one place now in this 32-bit microcontroller they have a bigger instruction set and this doesn't unduly slow it down but if I show you in the stats for that last screen we saw the other day they were like 600 bytes or 400 bytes you can see in this color on this color display for the SSD 1963 on a PIC32 256 bytes each so very small so if we look at my right number function 4600 bytes but remember I told you I've commented everything out above 10,000 so today we can have 99,999 so the clear screen 1400 bytes it's a massive screen 800 by 480 pixels get pixel color 884 set up the display so SSD 1963 5 inch 464 bytes but you see everything's quite compact and if you remember from the other day debugging that other smaller display just to write one character we had roughly 2000 bytes just to write a character so we haven't got that 2000 bytes there but we have got 4000 here relative to the size of the memory on this chip that's actually small if I go to the summary this PIC32 microcontroller so data memory I haven't used any ROM space so read only memory usage 0.9 of a percent so 4000 bytes to write that number the microcontroller has hardly blinked if you're not using a TFT but you've got LEDs on your board or something turn an LED on after each section in your code if the LED comes on then you know you're getting to that section if that section doesn't work then you can investigate if that section does work move the LED to the next section that's a good way of debugging your own code so you might think this is a classic mistake so this is written the number zero and this is meant to be a number one what on earth is going on here zero is okay the number one isn't or this might be a number two or a number three doing this let me show you on the screen classic mistake so right number zero there's a the right number zero and right number one so right number one we've got a char for the x so for the, the x is counting through the byte eight times so it's less than 255 so that can be a, a char 255 the data out is less than 255 it's either going to be a 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 or 128 the unsigned int i I step through the byte so remember the decimal values of a byte 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 to read and go past 128 the next decimal value is 256 I could just put 129 here but 256 is easier well, in my brain anyway so that's why the I is an int and once it goes past 256 it goes back to position 1 in fact that's another classic mistake if you want to shift through a byte and look at each byte you have to start at 1 so if we look at here I equals 1 if that was set to a 0 and you want to shift it one place to the left so multiply by 2 naught multiplied by two is naught <laughs> that's caught me out so something to watch out for one multiplied by two is two then two multiplied by two is four four multiplied by two is eight and that will step up through the byte so this number one wasn't working so we have a look at this char jj equals naught so it's two five five so for number font length bytes equals one we go up to the actual font so that font length bytes is 230 so there's the number zero ascii character 48 
There's the number one, ASCII character 49. So it's still only 230 bytes. Yeah, 230. Go back to, down to that number one. But have a look at this. So number font length bytes. This is a position for the number one in that font array. So 230 times one. And JJ is less than, so the end of number one is number font length bytes. It was 230 times two. Oh, 230 times two is 460. But I've got a char here, so that can only count up to 255. And that's the problem. That's a classic problem that I used to make all the time when I was a novice, not allowing enough space for something that's going to be counting past the initial setting. So the initial setting is okay, 230. But look, the JJ, because I've defined it in words, I can't see what the number is. If I, for example, which is how I used to start, so 230 times 2 is 460. Well, so you think that's better, that I can understand that. So for J equals 230, J is less than 460, J plus plus. What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that at all, except A, you can now see it's bigger than a char, bigger than 255. But B, if you then come along and change your font, that 460 is now wrong. Wrong for any other font of a different length. So, as a beginner, you'll start, like me, start putting numbers everywhere. And then as you progress, you get fed up of changing stuff and having to change hundreds of numbers. So you define it in words. So if I go undo, undo, that's a sort of, that's one of the tips. When you start developing longer code, don't put specific numbers in. Otherwise, when you change something, you have to run through your code and change it all. If I drop back down to the wild one, so those numbers you saw across the top of the screen. X position for all the numbers. So have a look at the X position equals naught. And so I can move them about the screen and I can just change this number once, this X position. And if one position changes, all the others follow it. So if we work through this, so the X position equals the X position plus. So that's the same as writing X plus equals. So that's still zero. The font width is 40, number spacing is two. So this X position, if we change this back to a char, just to show you yeah, a possible mistake, so the font width is 40 and the spacing is 2. So the 0 is at 42. The 1 is at 84. The 2 is at 126. The 3 is at 168. The 4, 210, so we're still okay. The 5, 252. Oh, so number 6... 294, so x position times 7. So number 6, 42 times x position times 7. 294, and now we've just gone over the value we can have in a char. So this would write everything up to position 7, and then it would hang. It would either hang or give you odd or funny results and that's all because I didn't allow enough room for this X position starts off small but grows above a char so we have to make it an int that int can obviously now count up to 65,535 two bytes so I nearly forgot I took my right number function, renamed it to right number bit, cut out everything I didn't need, changed the long to a string to a byte to a string. That changes the position to number two. Then I've got x position for a zero, 
an X position for a 1. Uh, and that was it. So there's the right number routine for the SSD 1963. Any size, but specifically for the SSD 1963. And you can drop in any font. If you're not sure how to drop in any font, look at my other videos. This is now looking at the seconds. That's the seconds units and the seconds tens. So no flashing, no nothing, just it writes the number. And when a new number comes along, it writes the whole footprint again. Simple. I'll put the C file in the show more soon after the video is complete, so give me time to do that. I'll also put a link to PayPal me if you want to donate a coffee for the effort I put into developing this right number function. Hopefully the tips have been handy and you've learnt something. Thanks for watching.